Lymphocytes are a subgroup of white cells that make up the core of our immune system, protecting the body from an endless stream of antigens. There are three types of lymphocytes, B cells, T cells, and natural killer cells. Natural killer cells play a primary role in our innate immune system, and they are not antigen specific, meaning they do not rely on surface antibody receptors to activate their function. We'll learn more about natural killer cells in another video. B cells and T cells, on the other hand, are antigen specific, and in this video we'll take a closer look. Both B cells and T cells utilize surface receptors in activating their functions. These surface receptors are protein molecules commonly known as antibodies and formally known as immunoglobulins. B cells and T cells are primarily associated with our adaptive immune system and they work together in dynamic ways to detect and eliminate an almost endless number of antigens. B cells are found circulating in the blood and they are also stored in the lymph system. The surface of the B cell is covered with antibody receptors precisely matched to specific antigens. For this reason, there are a countless number of unique B cells found in our blood and lymph system, each ready to respond if it encounters an antigen that matches its own surface receptor antibodies. T cells are found in the thymus where they are stored as immature lymphocytes. When called into action, the immature lymphocytes differentiate to match the antigens of the activating cell and are then released into the lymph fluid and bloodstream. There are two primary types of mature T cells, cytotoxic T cells and helper T cells. Now let's take a look at how these cells work together in fighting antigens. When an antigen first penetrates the body and is detected by a matching B cell, the B cell sets off a chain reaction in the immune system. First the B cell will ingest the antigen, break it apart, and then present a piece of the antigen onto a surface marker of the B cell. The B cell must then be activated by a helper T cell in order to begin producing antigen-specific antibodies. Other white cells, such as dendritic cells, are also involved as they will bind to the antigen, ingest it, break it down, and then present a piece of the antigen on the surface of the dendritic cell. Meanwhile, chemical signals from the B cell flow into the lymphatic system and to the thymus, where they trigger the release of helper T cells, which migrate to the point of infection. When the helper T cell comes into contact with the dendritic cell, it will bind to the antigen-presenting marker. This activates the T cell, which then divides into both memory cells and effector cells. The memory cell is basically a copy which remains circulating in the body, ready for any future attacks by this specific antigen. The effector cells migrate to the B cell, where they bind to the marker with the matching antigen. This process performed by the helper T cell provides a safety check for the immune system to confirm the presence of an antigen before triggering the alarm. Once the helper T cell effector binds with the B cell, it activates the B cell, which will then begin dividing. And when the B cell divides, it will create both factory B cells as well as memory cells. The factory B cells produce matching antibody molecules that are released into the bloodstream, searching for and binding to that specific antigen. The memory cells are clones of the B cell, which retain the information about the specific antigen and circulate in the blood, providing defense for the future. At the point of infection, B cells with matching surface receptors, as well as free-floating antibody molecules, will bind to the antigen, helping to prevent the antigen from binding to cells in the body and thereby depriving the microbe the food it needs to produce energy to divide and multiply. White cells known as phagocytes also then assist in ingesting and eliminating the antigen. Cytotoxic T cells then come into play by targeting the infected human cells. By releasing toxic proteins, the cytotoxic T cell causes the ultimate destruction and death of the infected human cell. In addition, cytotoxic T cells also target defective human cells, such as cancer cells. 